Every cause has its effect. Every effect has its cause. Everything happens according to law. Chance is but a name for law not recognized. There are many planes of causation, but nothing escapes the law. What if pretty much everything in your life is simply an effect that has a cause? That pretty much everything is not down to random chance? And even more, what if you could actually have a massive influence over these causes, which means that you would actually have a massive influence on the effects in your life? Essentially, this would allow you to influence reality in a way that brought the things you want in your life into your life. Well, this is more than just a what if thought experiment. This is a very real law of the universe that you can tap into, work with, and use to your benefit. In Hermetic Wisdom, it is simply known as the principle of cause and effect. There's also a principle or law known as the law of balance, which we're going to dive into in this video. And so many of the successful people you see today living the life of their dreams, living in states like joy, abundance, peace, prosperity, gratitude, love, not just in the financial uh, world, but also in the internal world. They are genuinely enjoying their lives. They are aware for the most part of this principle and they use it in their lives intentionally. And after this video, you're not only going to also be aware of this principle, aware of this law, how it works, but you're also going to know how to use it to great effect in your life so you're actually getting results. And be aware, this is not necessarily new information or new wisdom. This is actually information, wisdom, a system that ancient civilizations have used. Ancient masters, people throughout the ages who have known about it have used it and implemented it to live the life of their dreams and to activate what we can call their reality creation abilities in incredibly powerful ways. And the thing is, it works just as well today as it did 100 years ago 200 years ago, 5,000 years ago. So let's get you on the path to being able to utilize this powerful principle, be able to work with it, and start getting results in your own life. So what is cause and effect? Now you're probably familiar with at least cause and effect on the physical plane of existence. We're all taught that to some degree, you know, certain causes have certain effects. If I slap myself, for example, and I that's the cause. Well, the effect is it's probably going to be painful. There'll probably be a red mark on my face. You know, there's certain kind of actions and reactions and things to certain things that happen on the physical plane. Uh, we can see this with Newtonian physics and certain physical laws that we understand. But the thing is, cause and effect is not strictly a physical thing. It happens on all planes of existence. And so if you're aware also of the hermetic principle of correspondence, which you probably have at least heard of because if you've ever heard the saying, as above, so below, or as below, so above, that is coming from the principle of correspondence. And so to keep it very simple, uh, think of it in this way. There are three planes of existence we're going to work with here. That is the plane of spirit, the plane of mental or mentalism, and the plane of the physical. And so you have these three planes of existence, spirit, mental, and physical, and they all are in correspondence with each other. What does that mean? That means that causes and effects on one of these planes will influence cause and effects or have causes and effects on other planes of existence. Now to give you a simple example, one you can easily connect to, is you've probably heard of the idea that thoughts are things, that we become what we think about. The Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale goes over this over and over again. You become what you think about. Why is that? Because on the mental plane where thoughts and imagery and these kinds of things exist, if you are thinking in one way, you are activating certain, certain causes that create certain effects on the physical plane. Now the cause is happening on the mental plane, but the effects also show up on the physical. Again, to relate it to the spiritual plane, it could be that you are entertaining certain emotions. And let's say your emotions will go on the positive side. You feel joy and gratitude and love in these emotions most of the time. Those causes will create certain effects on the physical plane that correspond, that align, that are in line with what's happening on the spiritual plane. So when you think or feel that way, you're going to get more positive results 
on the physical plane. If you think in a very negative way, you're also going to affect the spiritual plane by feeling a certain negative way, and that works the other way around as well, which is going to create certain effects on the physical that match that. So essentially understand that cause and effect is not strictly limited to the physical plane of existence. In fact, if we think of it in this way, we are missing so much of the big picture. I've said this before, but the physical realm, this physical realm you see around you makes up a tiny portion of reality. In fact, to give you an exact measurement or as close as we're going to be able to get to, it makes up this number. It's 00.00. .00. 0.001% of reality. However, 99.999999% of reality is made up of empty space energy. And we can, for the purposes of this video, consider that the spiritual and mental plane. So absolutely, these planes of existence, the causes and effects on these planes of existence, create causes and effects on the physical plane of existence. And again, an easy way to think about that, thoughts, mental plane of existence, influence your physical causes on the mental plane, creating effects in the physical plane of existence, which is your life, your physical reality. Now, this also ties in nicely to something that I mention on this channel all the time because of just how true it is. And that is that the outer world follows the inner. If that tiny fraction of a percentage that I gave you is what makes up the physical, and that's how much of reality it is. Well, then the outer, which is that reality, follows the inner, the spiritual and mental plane, meaning the effects on the physical are more influenced by the causes on the spiritual and mental planes than anything else. Why is this important to understand? Because we want to start giving our attention more to that inner world, to the world of the mental, to the world of the spirit that the physical and your life in the physical is born out of. We are also going to talk about the law of balance, which ties into this as well. And I just want to give you a more complete understanding of how cause and effect works in your life so that you can start intentionally creating more causes that have favorable effects in your life. And how amazing would that be if you just knew how this process worked so that you knew how to think, you knew how to image, so visualize, you knew how to get yourself to feel a certain way so that it created beautiful effects in your life that were favorable, served you, and set you on a trajectory you actually wanted to be on. Not only is it possible, it is probable when you learn this and begin to apply it. So now we're gonna to touch upon the law of balance, which is so crucial to understand when it comes to cause and effect and so many of the other things you're going to learn. A lot of it is gonna come back to this law of balance. This is what's going to help you more master the law of attraction, manifestation, reality creation, understanding, and more importantly, applying this principle, this law in your life. And now to expand the law even more precisely, it is the law of balance and harmony. Now, this law essentially states that the universe, source, God, the all, is always seeking balance and harmony. Now, this occurs at different rates of vibration on each plane of existence. And I'm not going to dive too much into what that means. Um, you know, we can look at the principle of vibration. Essentially, at each plane, you know, vib the um, vibration of each plane is very, very different to different varying degrees. At the physical, it is the most dense. Um, at the spiritual, it is the most high, the faster rate of vibration. But essentially, with the law of balance, on each of these planes, the universe will just say for now, or the all, is simply trying to achieve balance and harmony. And I'll explain what this means and how this happens. So essentially understand, again, like I mentioned, on each plane, this is different. Um, when you talk about the spiritual plane, for example, it's instantaneous. For example, if I told you to feel love or joy, I could probably lead you to feeling that pretty instantaneously. Here's an example. I want you to think of someone that you love or a scene in your life, a memory that you know you just feel so fondly of. I just want you to close your eyes and just put your focus on that scene. And just for a few seconds, do that. Open your eyes and how do you feel? Do you feel differently than you did just a moment ago? Unless you were already in that state, you probably do. You probably notice that that shifted very quickly. Congratulations, you just raised your vibration on the spiritual plane of existence fairly instantaneously. The mental plane of existence can be similarly instantaneous where you can think of a certain thought. For example, if I say think of a pink elephant, you're probably thinking of a pink elephant. And again, where you put your focus is where your energy is going to go. Now, the physical 
realm is much slower. This is coalesced energy, coalesced focused energy in particular directions that allows for the physical world to exist. Believe it or not, everything you see around me, um, everything you see around yourself is actually energy, just at a more dense rate of vibration, a slower rate of vibration, so it appears physical. But if we had the right scientific instruments on us right now, we could look at these objects and you would find that it actually is made up of energy and it's just vibrating in place to create this illusion of the physical. Now, why this is important and why I need to mention this when we go over the law of balance is because if we achieve certain things on the spiritual plane and the mental plane, it'll lead to certain occurrences on the physical by law as in it has to happen. And I'm going to explain how that works and it may even blow you away when you learn how this works. So essentially, if you are thinking certain thoughts in the mental plane of existence, you're imaging, you're visualizing certain things. And let's say it's your dream life. Let's give a positive example. So you're thinking of your dream and your dream life, and you are rooting yourself there. You're thinking about it all the time. And on the spiritual plane, you feel so good. You're in energies like enthusiasm and happiness and joy and love. You're thinking of this thing that just your heart is so lit up by your intuition, your soul is imaging these things, it's creating these emotions, and you're able to do that for an extended period of time. Now, let's say in your physical realm, you have the physical results of maybe a more neutral kind of feeling or, you know, kind of like not your dream life, but it's okay. Well, now that you're thinking and feeling more of this dream life that's not here yet in your physical, but you are rooted in that feeling on the spiritual plane, and you are rooted in that visualization, that imaging, and that thinking on the mental plane, you start to come out of balance. You have now out of balanced your spiritual mental to the physical. And the primary law of the universe is the law of balance and harmony. And so balancing forces by law have to come in and maintain equilibrium, maintain balance and harmony. There are only two ways in which this can happen. I'll tell you the most common way that happens with most people, and you may be able to recognize this one happening to you. This has happened to me plenty of times in the past. It happens to everyone. And then I'll go over the ideal scenario that we're aiming for. So the first way in this scenario that the universe, that these balancing forces balance, is it gets you in one way or another. Chaos ensues. There's a storm or something in your life. And so you stop thinking about your dream, thinking positively, you start getting focused on the problems at hand in your physical world, you get hooked into the drama, you start dropping into fear and apathy or guilt and shame, and you drop your spiritual plane to a lower conscious level, your mental plane to a lower conscious level, and suddenly those have dropped and are now in balance with your current physical reality. And so the universe goes, balance and harmony has been maintained, we are done here. And that's ideally not what we want, right? And this happens to a lot of people when they go on this journey. You know, they've lived a life they would consider not fulfilling their potential fully. They learn some of this stuff. They get excited. They get enthusiastic. They're thinking of their dream. They're feeling these feelings. They're like, this is amazing. And then something happens. Some chaos comes out in their life. A bill comes in, right? An unexpected expense. Someone leaves their life. Certain things that actually need to happen to get you ready for what's next start happening. And so you take a step forward, but then you take a step back and then things are balanced again. But here's the ideal scenario. If you stay in the room, if you stick with it, meaning you keep your spiritual um, plane high, you're, you're feeling good most of the time. You're in joy and gratitude. You're feeling abundant. You're feeling happiness and love and peace. You keep yourself there. That will affect your mental plane where you're going to be thinking similar thoughts like that. You're going to be still thinking of your dream all the time. You're still going to be thinking and visualizing the life that you know is already here. It just hasn't come into the physical yet. You're already whatever it is. You just have to allow it to come into the physical and you stay there then the universe has to balance things in a different way. And it balances them through bringing things into your physical that allow your physical to correspond with your spiritual and mental plane that you've been keeping in a high place. High level of thought and visualization, high level of consciousness and energy, and the physical starts to balance. These are the only two ways it can happen.
Again, a lot of people take a step forward and a step back when certain chaos ensues, but the people who stay in the room, they understand everything is okay. They understand they, they don't know what they don't know, meaning they don't know why this stuff is coming in, but ultimately know it's for their good. They have faith in the process. They come through that storm calm and unscathed, and on the other side, this new beautiful reality that is matched to that spiritual plane that they stayed on or that level of vibration they stayed on there and the mental plane, they find the match in the physical. It just takes longer for energy uh, to coalesce and gather and shift on the physical because it's more dense. Essentially, the causes you are creating in your inner through the, um, through the spiritual and the mental are going to produce new effects in your physical. And your job is to get out of balance so that you can invite in balancing forces to rebalance your physical to a new level of coherence, clarity, and harmony. Now, at the end of this video, I am going to link you to another video that goes even deeper in how the law of balance works. In fact, I'm gonna teach you in that video how to do this at the cellular level so that your cells are vibrating. This, the literal cells in your body, the molecules in your body are vibrating at a certain level that allows this to happen so incredibly fast. So I will link that at the end if you wanna dive into the law of balance even more. But in a nutshell, I've given you what it is here. But if you do, if you're curious about this, you wanna dive into it deeper, I will have that available for you. Now really quick, before we dive into some tools and practical things you can do to apply this, because it's great to be aware of it, but here's the trick. If you don't apply these things in a practical manner, you're not gonna get results. Just having the information stored in your head, having not self-help, but shelf help, something that you read or you look at and it goes on the shelf forever, never look at it again, never apply it, isn't gonna help you. Applied knowledge is power. Applying this is what's going to get your results. Knowing and not doing might as well be the same as not knowing, because it will do nothing for you. So we wanna make sure, I'm, or I wanna make sure, I'm giving you things that are gonna help. Now, speaking of that, if you're ready to do this in just the most efficient, powerful way, um, you can take a look at our transformation program, EMF, which we take people through to help them get incredible results through utilizing principles like cause and effect at a high level, the law of balance, the other hermetic principles, if you know about them. Uh, we help them through a process that gets them results just so quickly in their life. Um, I'll put a free case study and training that you can look at first link in the description down below. So it will teach you more about the program, how it works, the results people are getting. It's absolutely free to go watch that. So if you aren't interested in doing this at a deeper level, doing it quickly, so not through trial and error, or trying to go off and do it on your own continuously, but to actually have mentorship and guidance and someone to hold your hand through the process so you absolutely get results, you can check that out down below. So what are some tools that are gonna make this more practical and lead to some more results? Well, first and foremost, we need to look at certain environments that you are engaging with. Um, because a lot of what's happening in your mental and spiritual plane is happening passively. Now we want to be more intentional with this, but environment beats will. This is always going to be the case. We have a subconscious mind, an unconscious that is running in the background all the time. And they say that about 90 to 95% of our behavior is subconscious. And so we want to prime our environment to wire our subconscious in a way that serves us. Most people have a out of control subconscious that is wired for failure, wired for hurt, wired for you know lack of confidence because their environment and the cues in it they're picking up are producing that. Right, watching the news, being around negative people, being in places that make you feel like crap is being picked up by the subconscious all the time, rewiring, refiring, firing and wiring certain patterns that are making it very difficult for you. So here are some things you can do to change this. The first one I wanna mention is your mental environment, and this is what we call your mental diet. Now watching videos like this is a great idea because it gives you the idea of possibility. It teaches you things that are useful, gives you some practical tools and tips. But then if you go off and watch some negative, you know, um, mainstream media, or go watch something that fries your brain or, or reinforces gossip or reinforces negativity in you, you completely neutralize the energy that this video is giving you and the information it's giving you, and and the potential it is giving you. You wanna watch more stuff like this that rewires the information, repeating the good stuff that's at a higher level of consciousness, reading books that are going to put you in that place. Ultimately, you want your mental diet to consist of things 
that expand your awareness, that put you in a good feeling place and motivational content, inspirational content, content that comes from what we call through me, where it's life working through the person or high levels of consciousness is going to do that passively. And so as you're listening to things, for example, one exercise I have is every single morning I listen to audios and read books or watch videos that fill me up with good energy. It's also good information. It comes hand in hand a lot of the time, but also good energy from mentors and guides that I trust because I know that's going to set me up for the day from a high place and anchor me in a high place of energy. So with your mental diet, the first thing is remove the stuff you know is bull crap and you all know what it is, right? It's not like we don't know. We know that browsing all the time on social media, especially things like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, God forbid, all these kinds of things is most likely not good for your mental diet. And just think of your mental diet in the same way as your physical diet. If you eat a bunch of junk food and you don't exercise and all these kinds of things, what happens? You put on weight, you get disease, dis-ease, but it's the same for your mental diet. Imagine when you're on TikTok or Instagram and you're consuming something that's negative or, or kind of lust based or something that's, you know, really appealing to cheap dopamine or whatever else. Imagine it for your mind, you're eating donuts and junk food and everything else. Whereas you're watching a video that's inspirational, you're reading a book that lights you up or connects so deeply, imagine that you eating this beautiful, organic, from the earth, natural foods that energize you and nourish your body. But in this case, nourish your mind. And so get your mental diet in order. It will do you a world of good and create an environment that allows you to think better and it will be doing it in the background. You'll notice after a few weeks and a month um, or even more after doing this, if you do it diligently, you're thinking differently just automatically. The next environment is your peers. And this is probably one of the most important because it utilizes so many of the other environments. Again, if you're around negative people, then your mental diet is going to take a hit because you're going to be picking up not only on verbally what people are saying, but their physical cues, their energy, their thoughts. You may not know what they're thinking, but we can pick up on the energy of thoughts. And so if you're around someone who thinks negatively all the time, you are absorbing that into your mentality, into your energetic body. And so the people you hang out with, it is crucial that you hang out with people that will be midwives to your dream, not dream killers. And a lot of people hang out with dream killers. And that doesn't mean don't be nice to people, don't be kind or treat them like they're some kind of leper. No, not at all. Give love to everyone. But this is your life, and if you want to have influences that are more beneficial to you, I would just ask you, if you know someone that's positive in your friend group, if you know people or groups that just facilitate that and they're all about helping people achieve their dreams, showing them possibilities, keeping them in a good place, start spending more of your time there. It's something that in our program we actually do. We have a peer group of people all moving in that direction, which is incredibly powerful. Um, if you do want to, again, check that out, that case study and how that works. But you got to start working on your peer group. It's one that holds back so many people where they try and do this stuff and then they're still hanging out with people who are like, why are you doing that? That's so dumb. Why are you wasting your time doing this stuff? I mean, it's a great dream, but you can't, come on, that's not realistic. All that kind of stuff takes a hit to um, your mental diet. It takes a hit to your energy and it's like fighting uphill when you just don't have to. And finally, the last environment I want to mention is your physical. What is in your physical space? Is it stuff that inspires you or is it stuff that feels like it's driving you crazy? For example, do you live in a very cluttered space? Do you have crap all over the place? Is it not organized? If you think that you can have chaos in your outer world and then coherence in your inner, it's going to be very difficult. But the more you develop that coherence in the inner, you're going to want to find that you're going to find that you're going to want to organize your physical environment, have quotes and things that inspire you artwork or pictures or other things like we have, um, we draw sacred geometry sometimes just for fun, because <laughs> that's what we do for fun. We don't go out at night. We draw sacred geometry, but we hang it around the house because every time I look at it, it makes me smile or I'll put quotes up that are really resonating with me at the time. And so set up your physical environment to win, have plants in your house, things that you know, connect with you in our high conscious. And this is how you can set up your physical environment to win as well.
So two more things I want to give you real quick that are going to help you. This next one is crucial and it, it may take some time to fully integrate and understand it, but I need to give it to you and it's feel good now. You know how I mentioned what you're doing on the spiritual and mental planes are having so many effects on the physical. Feeling good now is raising your vibration on the spiritual, which causes amazing effects on the physical. Now, when those effects come in, you have to take the opportunity or the person that's come in for you or the event or whatever else it is. But when you feel good, now most of the time you don't just visit good feelings you start living in good feelings great things start to happen on all planes of existence it has effects on all of them you'll notice it's easier to think positively to visualize positively you'll catch yourself when you're thinking negatively because it's such a contrast to how you're feeling and so you can catch it and change it now this doesn't mean if you're in like a pretty low place because that's where you have you are habitually at the moment you need to have faux positivity and go for like right to joy so instead of feel good now, you can also employ feel better now. What is one or 2% of an increase that you can look for and focus on? So for example, you might be in fear and maybe um, we can look at the Hawkins scale. You need to just think of things that you desire. Now, staying there wouldn't be the best, but let's just move up slowly and you can actually move up pretty quickly. So let's say you're in fear. One other thing to, that's good to do when you're in fear is transmute it to courage through the law of polarity, but we'll, that's for another video. But let's say you're in fear and putting yourself in joy is just not possible right now. It's like, oh, well, just think positively. That's not going to help you in that moment. So it's like, you know what? Instead of trying to go from fear to love, which is way up the scale, let me see what is one degree better. What is one thought that is like that, that feels good, but also feels like it's not BS in this moment. Okay, there's that. But now you're in a new place. So now you're at this thought and this feeling. What is one degree, two degree higher than that that I can think, think of? Okay, now I'm there. And you'll notice as you keep doing this that after like five minutes, you're not even close to fear and you're in a completely much better place. And so feeling good now or feeling better now is always a priority. You can let yourself stew in these lower levels of consciousness. And that's a choice. And it can feel easier to do that when you're there. So instead of, again, going to this big daunting task of trying to feel peace and joy when you're nowhere near it, just feel out for what is the best next thing you can feel. What is the best next thing you can think of? And then just grow it inch by inch from there um, just very quickly. And finally, letting go techniques are so crucial. If you find habitually you keep lowering your energy, keep going to this low place, there might be things you're holding on to uh, energetically in your body, uh, certain patterns that you keep tuning into, certain things that are in your energy body that get triggered all the time and activate certain thoughts that it's coupled with and combined with. You have these energetic anchors pulling you down, which means it's not time to add anything. It's time to focus on releasing certain things. And so letting go techniques like looking at David Hawking book literally called letting go the technique in that book or the whole pono 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 meditation which is a hawaiian technique which is an amazing technique to start letting go of things i would highly recommend you look into these things um, i do have a video on letting go that you can look at on the channel just typing um, letting go or shadow work i believe on the channel or just look down at some previous videos you'll find it uh, that's going to be really helpful because again if you're trying to do all these new things while holding on to energetic anchors that are weighing you down well you Again, you're, you're not going to get very far. You need to focus on letting go of these things that keep dragging you down even when you start moving up. And you'll find that once you release these things, you start to naturally rise anyway. Now, I mentioned I was going to give you a video at the end that shows you how to use the law of balance to literally balance your cells in a way energetically to start bringing about things in the physical at such a deep level. So I'm going to link that right here so you can go ahead and watch it. It's going to go over the law of balance in more detail, how to affect yourself at the cellular level, literally the molecular level. So you're vibrating in a way that causes things to come flying into your reality that you want.